All right, so we can start, I guess. Um, well, first and uh, foremost, I wish uh, I wish all the uh, participants uh, uh, either a good morning, good day, good afternoon, or good evening, because I've seen on the list that there are people from uh, all over the world, and it's, it's my great pleasure today to to uh, have just live next to me uh, a very long uh, friend of mine, uh, Paris Film, with which we have uh, worked for over 20 years now. I will get back to that a little bit later over the of the course. Um, just a few uh, housekeeping rules uh, during this uh, webinar. Of course, don't hesitate to come up with questions or comments. Do that in writing in the comment section box. You could also do it uh, uh, either to all or private. Don't worry, and we will gather all these questions at the end of the presentation so that we can go over it. Um, uh, that being said, uh, let's, uh, let's just uh, jump into it. The, uh, the topic today is uh, a combination of uh, soil washing and thermal desorption, and uh, in particular how that combination will be able to solve one very hot topic, which is PFAS, but we'll see uh, has also been applied uh, to uh, a few other applications. So my guest today, as I said, is uh, uh, Per and Per Schwem from Norway. Um, and Per has been, has had a very long career, and I don't want to say how long, uh, uh, almost exclusively in separation technologies and soil washing. And he will, he will tell that, uh, introduce himself a little bit uh, right after this. Uh, the webinar will cover just a short introduction of, uh, of, of who the speakers and the companies are, and uh, Per will then uh, lead us and, and then bring us through uh, the workings of soil washing, and uh, that will take over a bit to just remind some, some of those who are not familiar with that how thermal desorption works, and then we'll jump into the, the combination of soil washing and thermal desorption after having seen a couple of examples, uh, and how it is or can be applied to PFAS contaminated excavated soils. So let's start with the introduction. Um, Pierre, the floor is yours. Who are you? What's your company? <laughs> yes, I'm. Uh, my name is Pierre Spearm. I have been uh, working with environmental things for uh, almost 40 years, and a uh, uh, long period of this with uh, with uh, oil washing. So, in, and treatment of other contaminated materials. Uh, uh, this company that I'm in now is a quite new company. It's only eight years old. We are focusing on uh, solid liquid separation, and we do this for environmental businesses, for construction companies, and for industries. And uh, also, uh, this type of focus we have is on soil washing with mobile technology. We don't work with stationary plants, it's mobile technologies on site. And then uh, we do a lot of uh, projects in dewatering, dewatering watering of industrial sludge or uh, sludge from, uh, from uh, drilling operations, etc. And also we do and focus on particle separations, uh, hydrocycle, use of hydrocyclones, and also other technologies. We are a, a general techno uh, technology company working with solid liquid separation. Yeah, excellent. It reminds me a lot of my mining engineering days a long time ago. So. Yeah. Um, to remind who we are as Hamer's Technologies, uh, most of you may have known us, following us for a uh, for a while now, but we're a technology company. We are focused on uh, thermal desorption. Um, we're just a little bit over 50 people based here, uh, mainly in Brussels, and we operate uh, all over the world. When we say a technology company, it's the projects we do, we do through partnerships with local companies. We really believe, and, and Paris is a good example of long lasting partnerships. We really do believe that, that mixing technologies and contracting and skills is the best way to move forward for uh, the benefit of all. Um, we will, we of course, we apply these technologies either on site or for excavated material on the left hand side, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. But there's a hell of a lot of applications in situ as well where no excavation is uh, involved. So, Pep, how is uh, soil washing working? Just could you briefly tell the audience how that, how yes. that works? 
I don't know. A lot of you probably know a lot about soil washing. Some of you are quite new. Uh, soil washing is an old uh, in, uh, remediation technology. It was very popular, popular already in the 80s, uh, especially in Germany, but a lot of soil washing plants. And uh, also in the US, there are a lot of examples of big uh, soil washing projects that was conducted. Basically, there are two traditions of uh, soil washing. It's the technology that is based on uh, mineral processing, a lot of particle separation, uh, some washing, of course, washing always, but uh, particle separation can be more important than in other uh, plants, soil washing plants. And then it is the, the more American tradition, which is more washing, more chemicals, more, uh, more uh, uh, liberation of the chemicals, while in the German uh, it is liberation of particles also from the... So, so if I can summarize, you say historically there's been soil washing to separate physically let's say the fine materials and the coarse materials, which is one type of, of soil washing, and the other one, which is more putting it in a, in a sludge so that the particles are, are dissolved in or transferred from the solid phase or to the absorbed phase to the liquids. That's yeah, the two yeah. basic plants. Yeah, right. That's correct. The basic uh, idea with, uh, with uh, soil washing is that, uh, as you know, uh, small particles have a relatively higher surface than the bigger particles. So clay, it has an enormous, it's like uh, uh, football grounds on a, a few grams of, uh, of clay, while uh, gravel has almost, it has only the surface you can see. As you can see here on this on this graph pretty well, huh, where, where you, on this logarithmic scale, you see the yeah. square meters per kilo in yeah. liters. It's very, very big. Yeah. And therefore also, of course, uh, the Contaminants has a huge area on clay particles to absorb to. I don't. Yeah, indeed, because you have the same the same for for, uh, for one square meters, you will you will have the same kind of contaminant absorbed. They will be concentrated very few kilos of clay rather into hundreds of tons of gravel. That's yeah. the that's the that's the area. Is it like like with the filter material? If you want to have efficient filter material, you need to have small particles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So here you can see the, uh, the, the gravel on the left, almost no. Then in the, in the soil washing process, we take out, first of all, the coarse material, take out metals, scrap, things that either has to be disposed of in a normal landfill or can be recycled. And then, uh, of course, we take out sand, which has a much higher surface, but uh, nothing compared to the, uh, the clay and the silk material. Which explains why it's mostly clean enough to be recycled. Yeah, yeah. But also it must be a uh, comment that there are different ways also to do this particle separation. That you Normally you have a cut on 63 microns, that is a conventional yep. soil washing uh, process, but it is possible to, to go down in cup size. For instance, you can do it on 10 uh, microns, 40 or 10 or whatever, but, uh, uh, depending on how the, uh, the contaminants are or stored spread over, spread over. over the different granulometry. So it can be, uh, can be there. Yeah. So on the left, you see, uh, this is uh, from a, a soil washing plant that has a chamber filter press for dewatering. And therefore, you get a very, very uh, dry uh, filter cake. Filter cake in the end. So this is the kind of basic process. There are some numbers. Don't look at them at the numbers. It's only the process. You put in the raw uh, contaminated soil. Then we have a soil washing plant, which is Dependent on the technology, it can be uh, log washers, it can be sieves, it can be attrition saves, it can be hydrocyclones in a certain combination. And from this, 
we get out, uh, for instance, gravel and sand, which is normal. And recycle. And recyclable. Okay, usable. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't mention in the beginning that soil washing has gained a, a much higher interest the late, latest years because of the introduction of the circular economy thinking. So now it is a point to use material again and again. Then from the soil washing plant, we we, uh, we get uh, the sludge, which basically is the silt or the clay. And then uh, we, uh, we have a, a water treatment plant for the rest. Water treatment, sludge, tre sludge treatment, uh, sedimentation. We have uh, uh, process water that needs to be cleaned. And we then we take out the filter cake here from the process water after sedimentation which can contain normally in a soil washing plant, uh, the contaminated, the contaminated uh, uh, filter cake, because of the, of the, uh, uh, the high, uh, the high uh, surface area and absorption properties. And then we can clean the, the uh, process water as we always do, because we are reusing the, in a modern, Normal filter, uh, normal soil washing plant. It is a it's a circulation of process water. There's no emissions. So, in this case, we say we say that if it has been PFAS that we come back to, it will be activated carbon to clean the uh, uh, process water. Okay. What is is also important is that in this wet liberation, the process needs to be good enough. Uh, so that uh, the uh, sand and and uh, gravel particles are not covered with uh, with clay and uh, and, uh, and silt. So it must be efficient. Uh, but to be clear for, for the audience, it is is, is is it's essentially friction, so that there is a physical separation between the clay particles, let's say, and the sand or gravel particles. Yeah. The and that creates a deep sand. Yeah, because then the, what what is what would what would make sand or gravel clean is that there, there is no clay attached to it anymore. So it needs to be physically uh, separate. And that is a normal problem with soil washing that you don't get the sand uh, gravel clean enough because it still contains a lot of sand. Uh, it's like you try to do this with a dry process. Okay. It, would not, it would never be 100% no. uh, separation. Like any physical separation, yeah. it's never 100%. Okay. So, and then it is, of course, the, the, the absorption of, uh, of uh, contaminants and also this, the, the way uh, the cleaning of the, the, process, the, the particles. And then it's separation of particles from into the washing fluid. Uh, that is the essential part of this. Uh, normally, we use uh, only water for soil washing. It's, uh, Efficient enough, it's enough. But uh, sometimes uh, we also need to, to to go ahead and use other uh, sorts of uh, uh, material. So, so that so that the liquids are more uh, are more effective to to dissolve the contaminant you want to separate. Yeah, because it's uh, sometimes we need to introduce something which alters the absorption properties of, uh, of the contaminants or also the, the absorption properties of the, of the uh, particles that have an or, or the pH in yeah, yeah. this case. pH is very normal too. Okay. So uh, after sufficient mixing and rem the remediated salts are separated from the water. And uh, It, you just have you have that that once once that we, we have adapted pH or put surfactants. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, you make sure that the solids that remain and whatever could be transferred into the liquid is done as yes, as, as efficient as efficient as we've done. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Now application. What what would you like yeah. to? The good uh, it can be used on uh, on semi volatile compounds, oils, fuels, pHs, uh, inorganic, even radionucleates. Examples are done, mm -hmm. and uh, 
certain ex uh, examples or circumstances, the technology can also be used to volatile compounds, pesticides. Uh, Would you agree that historically it was for heavy metals and then it has moved into the organic uh, fraction? Uh, yeah, so, but uh, it was also in the, when I started uh, soil wash in 1995, 96, the first project was on heavy, it was on creosote, contaminated soil. Okay, that kind of uh, heavy organic. So, uh, so uh, I think it's a very robust technology, it's very, can be used on, uh, on uh, lots of things. Uh, do you say it's a separation and recycling technology? It's a separation and recycling technology, more known than it was before, because of the mindset uh, environment uh, authorities today. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, also, there are some, some uh, limitations on availability. Also, it's an upgrading technology. It's the material you get from a washing process is uh, both uh, Recycling, it's recycling materials without uh, fine particles, and therefore, like in a company like Norway, we want to have frost free uh, material. Yeah, of course. So, let's go into an example. You yeah, just see, chose one. This is an example from an um, from, uh, industrial uh, site in Norway. We are treating uh, uh, Hydrocarbons and, and PCBs as a car uh, demolition ground. And, uh, and uh, in this case, we see that uh, about 60% uh, of the material was, uh, was uh, gravel. Yeah, this part, so above two yeah. millimeters? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, but uh, on, on, based on waste, but uh, and then uh, uh, we took out uh, material above 63 micron, which was like a conventional thing. Mm -hmm. It was a small uh, mobile soil washing plant. There was a lot of organic material, uh, and then the concentration of uh, PCBs you can see here in the different fractions. Uh, and 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 hydrocarbon as well. Yeah, yeah. And here you can see clearly what you said earlier on about this, that you know, like the very fine fraction, the, the fines have a much 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 higher concentration. Yeah. So yeah. almost all the mass of contaminants is concentrated into those sixteen percent of very fine material. Yeah, also in the organic, uh, the and organic, organic fraction. fraction. So, the organic fraction, it uh, had to be. Uh, Disposed of together mm -hmm. with, uh, with the fish tank. At that time, we we didn't have a technology to deal with this inside. But uh, like today, we know that we could have done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and uh, so it was a very good project. It was possible to recycle 84 percent of the material. 16 percent required further treatment. In this case, it was not treatment. It was disposal. Disposal. Okay. So. So uh, I have just a comment here. Soil washing plants are today they are either stationary or mobile. They have always been the same. Big stationary plants. We always had this in, especially in Germany. Uh, we had a few in Belgium here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is one very close yeah. to us. Very nice plant. I mean, there, there was a long history of uh, long history. soil washing yeah. plants in. Of course. Uh, 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 Good thing with with the uh, soil washing is also that you can do it on site, and then you will require a uh, one type or another of mobile uh, plant. Uh, other mobile plants, of course, have lower capacities, but also it can be easier, easier to control the the uh, the process in a small plant than in a huge huge plant. So this is an example. This is a. A mobile plant based on uh, uh, built on four trailers. Half of the two of them are soil, uh, soil washing. Uh, the two in the back, the two in the front are water treatment. This is the same, but it's only four 
two trailers. How long would it take to set that up? Normally uh, two days. A few days. Well, pretty, that's pretty more. Like, uh, it's like going in a remediation right. action on, uh, <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a camping. Uh, <laughs> This is a this is a container based plant. It's it's built out of seven containers. Would that take a bit longer to set up? Yeah, I would say seven eight days. All right, right. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, and this is the the same type of plant. It's also container based, uh, but it can work under very extreme yes. cold yes. conditions yes. i see also I mean, the, also you're, you're pretty used to that in norway so also the former plant uh, so it, it can put on uh, cover then we can run it all year around uh, if we can keep the contaminated input material uh thought of okay so it advances that it can treat both organic and inorganic uh, contaminants in the same system. Uh, generally, there is no uh, wastewater discharges discharge from the system, so it's not so difficult to get a permit. And uh, soil washing is one of the few permanent treatment alternatives of soil contaminated with metals and value materials. And most uh, soil washing technology can treat a broad range of concentration, instrument contamination. So it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of how you, you, you run it. I said before in the presentations that it's like a, a kitchen machine. If you are a good cook, you can do good, make good food. But if you are a lousy cook, it doesn't help if the machine is very good. Okay. So. And also, of course, you need to adapt it to soil, the soil matrix characteristics. That you have to balance uh, different parts depending on the on the amount of the different soil fractions. Cannot mm -hmm. in the European market, I would say today that uh, cost range ex exclusive um, uh, to take care of uh, the fifth rate. But that's just that would be the cost to run the, the material through the machine and, and to the make the separation uh, into the water phase and all the different fractions. Yeah, okay. It's between 25 and 170. Yeah, pretty wide range. Yes. What would that influence more? The capacity or capacity, type of? capacity and uh, and the distribution, the particle size. Okay. Yeah, of course. Limitations. Yes, there is a lot of uh, of course there is limitations with all of this. Uh, Technology. It's, uh, it's uh, the fact that we have we need to be able to dispose of the. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a it's a concentration technology. So you, it's not 100% recycling. You're recycling as much as you can, but you still have a fraction to yeah, recycle. Yeah, waste. It's a waste reduction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. And soil that has a uh, too high uh, percentage of, of uh, whatever you take out as such. Uh, hence, hence that limitation. Yeah, 30, 30. Yeah. If you have much more, it makes no sense to separate. No, no. But whole. of course, if we knew that we could separate out, let's say, at 10 microns, even could be could be, uh, be economically efficient also for higher amounts of small material, if not all this material was contaminated. Uh, okay, yeah, of course. Yeah. And also, of course, uh, high humic content uh, is a problem. If there is, uh, uh, you cannot, you cannot uh, organic soil, for instance, has nothing to do with the soil. Yeah, okay, that's complicated. Yeah. Yeah. So, then, of course, we need, if you should do it on site, we need uh, uh, room for the plant itself, dependent on the footprint of the plant. And also, we need uh, mat uh, we need a, a place for intermediate storage of contaminated and clean material while we are waiting for it to be able to, to get it out and use it or sell it or sell it. Okay. It, it, and, and you haven't put that in. if I might there is an obvious one since my uh, it's 
you need to excavate the material. It, it, it cannot be applied in situ. That's the one I would add just as, a, yeah. as an in situ really, plan, wherever really. we can apply that, course, I, would, uh, course, course. I would do that. It seems obvious, but... Uh, this this is, a, is a technology that competes, competes mainly with landfill. Okay, it, it, it's, uh, as you say, it, it's pushing recircularity, whatever you, whatever you can just distract from landfill and reuse as, as construction material is... is, yeah. is, is, is. All right, thank you very much. So um, I think it was a, uh, a, a quite a clear presentation of how the soil washing works. Uh, I'm going to go much faster through the thermal distortion as most of you are, you are have seen it and know it. Um, very simply said, thermal distortion is putting heating elements in the soil, heating the soil up to a certain temperature where contaminants are vaporized and then separately recover those vapors and either reuse them as fuel when you can so the burners would do that and you will have let's say zero waste or condense them absorb them neutralize them i mean anything else you can you can do with the vapors bottom line the soil is clean at, after the treatment and you either have some absorbed residues uh, or liquids or no waste at all so that's how it works uh for those of you who have already applied it, this is how a burner control looks this is how a burner and burner body looks and this there you can see in this example where the the vapors that come out of the soil are re-burned in the in, in the burner itself so to in order to produce no waste um, and this is how we will apply it and we have applied and see that here in in the case we, we we're looking at in in piles so where you don't drill it of course but you just build layers and layers and in between those layers you place heating elements in this area on the bottom who heat then the, the, the soil and then extraction vapor tubes to recover the, the, the mobilized vapors. If you don't recover them, you can just make them good. Um, table of contaminants, don't read it. It's by and large organics because everything you can mobilize at, 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 at relatively medium temperature, uh, you would do. And a few inorganics like mercury or cyanide, but it's basically something for organics. We would not touch heavy metals by, by definition. Um, can take a few, few examples where it's applied in situ, as, as, as I think it's the most elegant way when you can to apply in situ, when you cannot, you would, you would treat it. This is the site where the Olympics took place, and this is a good application where, you, where we could just provide some technology to, to clean up the soil without having to dismantle it because the architecture was really a key to this Olympic site earlier this year in the Winter Olympics to make sure that they could keep that and, and, and use that as, a, as an Olympic site. Uh, another good example, which we will, uh, which is pretty close to what we're targeting here for PFAS, it's uh, mercury. Mercury is, uh, uh, in this case, it, it's a school, and in this case, it's both in situ, where you can see pipes under a building in, in, in the city, and on the other, on the other hand, uh, drill cuttings that are treated as a pile on site, few other cases where you can see some vertical ones and all the vapors were recovered into a vapor treatment unit where condensation, of course, was the main one. Once temperature was reached all over, of course, you start to recover uh, the mercury itself. And uh, then, yeah, you get bottles of metal mercury because you just sweat it out and then recondense it. And uh, they're still there, of course. Um, we also work in some cold climate, very remote, where then, of course, insulation is important, but it's pretty robust. This is also excavating material and pretty similar already to filter cakes we're getting there. Um, this is another project I like on crude oil, where uh, the whole idea was to recover the crude oil in the, uh, uh, in the vapors. So not only did we heat it, but then, of course, the crude oil was condensed, not reused because they had uh, way too much energy as waste. And this is an example where uh, uh, treating soil could also recycle oil about 25 barrels per day just to give an idea of, uh, of how it works. Uh, can work in basements, uh, in, in the center city. This one is center of Copenhagen, under existing buildings, in existing buildings, in residential houses, also inclined under the house, uh, under office buildings in center cities. Or gas stations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the, the 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 technology, just as soil washing, is now is now very well established. Works for a whole range of uh, organic contaminants. And now the idea is, how can we make that? Uh, how can we combine it? And let me jump into this for the 
second to the last part of this uh, webinar, where where did we find the combination, the original combination between soil washing and thermal desorption? So essentially, as uh, you said, paired, uh, it's a pretty cost. Soil washing is pretty cost effective and reliable separation technology uh, between sand, the gravels, part of the soil, and then uh, uh, the clay content. So and the clay fraction, hence the focus where, where it's at his sweet spot for low clay content soil, so sandy and gravel soil. Um, but the drawback is that is it generates residues, concentrates, filter cakes, and also some, some uh, uh, in case, some case carbon, I mean, some treatment of the, of the, mm -hmm. of the recircular water, that, that it still has some residues, not 100%. But thermal desorption, well, that's exactly what thermal desorption will do. It will treat those either high, uh, clay content elements, or even in some cases, the carpet. So, by combining both, the idea was, yeah, you you would take you would take best of both worlds, have yeah. the lowest cost because it still is it still matters a lot, generate no waste, and finally provide full destruction and uh, full treatment. So, in, in regard to circularity and, and and not pushing it forward, it, it was pretty. Good. So I'm just showing you two examples as because long, as long as we have organic, I as long as we have organic, of course, no. uh, uh, to be clear, this would never apply to heavy metal. No. So I'm just illustrating two cases of combination there, which is finished recently. The one is with uh, uh, our partner in Poland, Remia Poland, who uh, who treated as a uh, as a general contractor the, uh, a very contaminated pond here where the dredging took place for the materials. And as you can see in the back there, they had a soil washing slash dewatering plan for all these sludges. So that was the idea and, and, and not to concentrate, but can, can the work be finished and nothing leave the site? You see, it's a pretty urban area as well. So the idea was, yes, let's see what we can do with these filter cakes. Pretty uh, common uh, view or image in, in, in dewatering plants, so that's what a filter press as well. These are the cakes that was the, where the residue with very high concentration, this in particular pH is naphthalene and a few other chemicals. So here we go, we start to build a pile with those cakes. Uh, the, the, the concern here is stability because it's a, there's a lot of liquid and a lot of water which we're concerned about stability. So uh, of course we come up with some creative stuff on how to keep the, the heating elements as you can see them building them and putting and inserting those pilot, those pipes and the extraction pipes. Uh, and then first doing a pilot to make sure everything was fine. And then uh, this is the pilot operating. And as you can see in this picture, you have an operating pilot and then uh, finally, we did two large batches. This was batch number one in construction uh, while, the, while the pilot was uh, up and running. This is how it looks like when it's finished. You can see the difference in appearance. It's hot. It's, it, it was, of course, completely clean and recycled. And this is a picture of how the filter cakes look before and after. I've been told that that's what the legend said in Polish. I will just trust my very good friends there in, in Poland. Um, and the second example is uh, very, getting much, much, much closer to the nature of the uh, was is a good example of Agent Orange and dioxin. Why do I mention it? It's organic. It has very similar desorption and, and volatilization and destruction uh, requirements than PFAS. And, uh, and in this site, the same thing. Uh, both technologies have been combined. Uh, that was a Japanese company called Chinitsu, who has a, a mobile, this is also a mobile salt washing plant. I guess it took them a little bit longer than a few weeks to build up the big one. But as you can see in the forefront here, you see the different um, parts of or the different uh, of flows with the gravel and the sand. And what we were concerned about was indeed the, uh, the sludge, which contained most of the dioxins in the skins. So um, the site is large, so the whole idea was to show that of course, there is soil that contains a lot of clay at the beginning that would not be able, would not go to the soil washing plant that would be treated directly. So we built a pile with that. In the middle, we had some ponds where we put two types of material. The first was the filter cakes from the soil washing plant, and the other one was some sludge that came directly from some ponds which contained almost on, uh, only fine, so it made no sense to, uh, uh, to to go through a soil washing plant. So that was essentially how the, the pile was built and then uh, started to heat up. And here, very important, all these vapors were sent to a thermal oxidizer to be destroyed. 
So there was no condensation, no absorption. There was an activated carbon in case of emergency because sometimes it shuts down, you have to go to carbon. But at the end, the main process was to, to oxidize the whole thing at 1200 degrees for two seconds. And we already go into the next section about, about PFAS. That's the temperature in the resident science. We will need to destroy completely the PFAS. Right. And in, in dioxin, it's the same thing. We need it to first mobilize it, separate it, and then destroy it. And that's exactly what happened here. And uh, at the end of the day, also the carbon, which was used to, to uh, uh, treat the condensates, or uh, the carbon itself was also put into the thermal oxidizer to, to, to be destroyed and generate the energy. So here is a target, pretty high destruction rate efficiency targets. As you can see, no surprise compared to the initial soil that washing cakes are, of course, higher in concentrations. And, you know, that these were the, the targets on destruction rates that were put uh, at the beginning for the different sections with different uh, types of, of targets. But you can see here in operations and gives you an idea of the date. Um, uh, after COVID, we arrived on site end of December uh, 2021. Um, restored and start installation testing, etc., and started treatment on second of February. Uh, so it's not really plug and play, but it's not that long either. And uh, mid March, the treatment was over after 40 days of treatment. On the bottom on the right, you can see the pile in operation where the soil is heated, and on the left hand side, you can see the thermal oxidizer where the, the dioxin in this case, the contaminant, is completely destroyed. So here you see some temperature evolution, of course. Over the course of these 40 days, it's important to follow up to make sure that everything reaches temperature because that's the mobilizing element. That's how the, the contaminant is mobilized and then can be extracted from the pipe. And after 40 days, this was completed. Um, of course, authorities come in and check that emissions are compliant. They were. Check that ambient air was clean because, of course, there are people uh, in the area. They, they were. And at the end, uh, uh, everything was above 99% destruction rate efficiency. And for the sludge and washing cake, which we can, we are even above 99.9%. So that's pretty. That was pretty uh, nice as a, as a result. So, I mean, I'll recap what what we tried to provide is something that is rapid, effective, climate friendly, affordable, and predictable. And the combination of these technologies made us reach as good as it could get onto speed, effectiveness, climate friendliness, and then, you know, it had to be not too expensive and predictable. So last section and we're almost done. Now, how do we apply that to PFAS? Because we've seen the principle, we've seen the principle of soil washing, we've seen the principle of thermal desulfur, we've seen it can be combined and applied. So the obvious question is, you know, this kind of sub substances and properties everybody's talking about, uh, can it be done with this combination? I think so. so. Yeah, you can, you see here in this in this uh, in this presentation how hot the topic is, and this doesn't even count 2020, 2022. The number of patents is just going to the roof. That 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 mentioned PFAS. It's a very hot uh, political topic. You can see it all over. Uh, this is a Dutch map, but but the, every country is now focused. Uh, uh, politicians are all over PFAS. It's like the, the the main and only topic. So what I'd like here was to present it was the uh, a, a graph about water treatment uh, maturity technologies on the left hand side how experimental or mature they are and on the you know on the horizontal side how viable or feasible they are. So of course you want to be here in that right hand corner, uh, and I think this graph shows pretty well what the difference is between destruction, so what really destroys the molecule, and what is stabilizing on or or separating it which is which is which is a waste reduction rather than than complete destruction so that's for the water which is not direct about our, our sub subject but a little bit because indeed in soil washing yes it's very important because uh, unless we are able to retreat the process water efficiently soil washing will never be efficient so, yeah, so it's very very important that we as Soil washers also have a view on, on, uh, on water treatment technologies and efficiency of it. And, uh, and uh, I think the soil washing process, if water is not uh, uh, clean efficiently and fast, then 
there will be limitations on the sorry about it. Uh, absolutely. And in particular, as you show, or we will show, uh, we know PFAS are very soluble. So if you start to put them in a, in a water mixture or, or slurry, it will transfer to the to the to the to the dissolved phase. So it's important to know that we need technologies to take it out of the water and to absorb or separate it if possible. Maybe later on to complete the destroying. Yeah, and I, I think it's the most interesting thing with uh, with PFAS and, and soil washing is the water solubility. Yeah. That we can actually transfer the uh, compounds into the process water much easier than the most other things we try to, to work. Yeah, absolutely. And um, as you can see, there are quite a bit now of technologies, and, and I know there are more coming, and there's a lot of research going on and, 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 and testing, but new technologies that can handle water. Now, when it comes to soil, yeah, it's not that many, right? We we can see that again in blue. You have a few upcoming technologies, new ones, and and we'll see how they they progress. We hope they can they can get more to the mature and feasible stage. But when you go into the into the bottom right corner, it's pretty, you know, ex situ thermal incineration. These are the destruction ones, and stabilization or excavation yeah. are the or the absorptive and separation one. Well, this graph just lacks a bit of the cost element. Unfortunately, those ones also have higher cost, whereas soil washing is still is here, but has the advantage of being a lower cost solution, lower energy. So I guess the idea was, yeah, why can't we combine those two to get to the best of both worlds, destruction and low cost, essentially, high throughput and low cost. Absolutely, that's the way to do it. So here is how it would work. I yes, um, see here that we we uh, we uh, this is the same figure that you saw in the beginning, and this is how we can imagine that uh, the PFAS. Okay, we we start with the uh, raw contaminated soil, which is uh, one hundred percent uh, one hundred percent of the the contaminants are of course, and then. Uh, we are able to transfer 99% uh, to, uh, to the process water. We think this is the case. And then the gravel and, and sand will be quite clean, providing that uh, liberation process in the, in the washing process is good enough. So I mean, we need to definitely have a good washing process to, to Remove fine particles from uh, from the from the sand and gravel that we probably want to to reuse in some way or another. Okay. Then uh, we have this uh, normal sludge uh, water treatment and sludge treatment process, and you see here that we believe that only a very small fraction, let's say three percent, maybe five percent. We end up in the filter cake. But to be clear, it's that's the repartition, the mass balance of the PFAS. The PFAS. It's not three percent weight of, no, no, of no. product. It's it's, it's essentially it. where the PFAS go. And 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 what you it's, show here is uh, with a good attrition and a good soil washing plan, almost none will be in gravel and in sand. But very few, but still some will be in the filter cake, and most of it will be in the water. Yeah, maybe also. In, we have to do something with the process water because uh, you know the solubility is also pH dependent. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, and, uh, and there are different ways to do this. It's, uh, it's uh, something that we we do dependent on the soil matrix and water properties in general. Then of course, uh, since only a small percentage of the original uh, PFAS we end up in the filter change. We need to, to do something with the rest. That means that we need to treat the process water very, very, very efficiently. I refer to what I said in the last slide. Yep. The last slide that water treatment is uh, very important. In this case, we still believe that uh, activated carbon will be the the most efficient could be other things, ionic exchange or, or other technologies that is coming. But, uh, but uh, then 
that we need also then to deal with extracted carbon. With all of course, yeah. And that's, I guess, where we, we're coming into the, 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 the beauty of the combination. Of course, here are two residues, activated carbon with PFAS and filter cakes. Now, filter cakes, that is typically what will be treated by thermal desorption yeah. in piles, because those, it, putting them in piles and heating them up will mobilize them, and now will transfer them from that absorbed form in the cake to vapors. Those vapors being then destroyed in a thermal oxidizer, just as we did for dioxins, yeah. pretty, pretty good example. But the beauty is, and exactly as we did for dioxins, is that the carbon itself containing all these PFAS, small quantities in, in mass, right? The, the big mass is still in the gravel and sand. These are relatively lower in, in mass and in, in, in quantity, but can also be uh, uh, destroyed in a thermal oxidizer, basically closing the loop and having a, a full recycling system now with only gravel and sand and clean cakes that would come out of the process. So I guess that's... Um, Almost on time brings us to just uh, uh, just a recap slide where I think we we could try to bring you to uh, to the idea, the audience, that we could combine soil washing and thermal absorption, and that for sandy soils in particular, this is definitely a rapid solution. This is definitely a very effective solution. There is nothing left behind, no contamination left behind. It's climate friendly because it has optimized energy concerns and has a pretty low energy footprint. It's affordable, again, by being opti by, by optimizing things, you we have reduced the maximum of the cost per ton, and it is highly predictable. It is not depending on many, many things. So um, that being said, just to uh, thank you uh, very much, Per, and uh, I guess it's time for your questions. Uh, let me see if you have any in the box yet. I just need a little bit of time to get through that. I see no questions for the time being. Just then, let me start with, with just one for, for you, a pair on the, on uh, what do you think the, the the cost would be for treating PFAS with this combination? Do you have any range, any idea? I would assume uh, about uh, 70 euros, 80 euros for the washing process. For the washing processing yeah. cost. And then, of course, the, the rest will depend on the on the granulometry, of course, for that. Yes, and also on the size of the project. I mean, if it is a, a big project and you you influence on the mobilization costs will be smaller. But if it's a small project, a small project, uh, yeah, what? I say it's 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 but uh, I think. This will be approximately the, uh, the cost. Yeah, okay, so it, only it, for the washing. Of only course, yes, I understand. So that's just to passing through yeah. uh, the machine. Yeah. And um, and when we say it's, uh, do you have any idea about energy consumption? Uh, could you give us a range for a medium size? What is a medium size plant? 25, 30 tons an hour or something like that? 20 tons. 20 tons. Per hour. What what would be the the electrical consumption for that? You need to have 300 kilowatts. But but that is to install. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about the actual consumption. Oh, uh, say it will be if we take it per ton <coughs> with today's uh, cost, fifty-five euros euros per. Fifty-five kilowatt hour per ton. Uh, oh, uh, five to six euros per ton. Okay. 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 So, and uh, because just to it, it, it's interesting to see how energy and that brings me to the to to to, to the next topic which I will co close with. But um, that the, the energy is is quite it's quite a, an important topic to know how much that that will consume. So the answer is pretty positive on 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 being on being uh, uh, quite uh, I mean not having the lowest possible total energy cost, uh, consumption. Of course. Okay. So. Uh, what would be the, uh, the, uh, the I see a question here. What would be the most uh, credible alternative to separation and disorder? What, what what do you think? What's the alternative to that? To separation and disorder. Land filling. Yes. 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 
that's the one. That is that's a uh, that situation. Uh, for instance, in Scandinavia at the moment. It's, and I would argue, I would also add incineration as as was shown. Yeah, yeah, that, okay, the, so both are they are the current alternatives. The one being essentially, you know, sending it to landfill. It means the next generation will deal with the problem. We are done. Or incinerating. I think that's pretty effective, but it's going to be extremely ineffective from an energy standpoint, and very ineffective or very expensive. And then so, uh, you have the transportation cost. And yeah, of course. And uh, thing, uh, so here you can you can come on site. You still need to excavate, but you can come on site. I'm talking only about the cost related to running the plant. Yeah, to running the plant. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So I see another question is, is it possible to uh, to apply these technologies in the in the jungle, in the soil uh, located in uh, the, the jungle in Peru with uh, also heavy metals such as barium and heavy hydro hydrocarbons? I think it's a good question. If you have all these mixtures, would it help? Yeah, if it is, uh, it's, uh, if it's uh, sandy soil, it's, uh, of course it's possible. Yeah. So I, I think I would agree as well, saying that uh, the, the cocktails is not so much a, a problem. It, it's actually a good a good idea. Uh, the, 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 the the critical element is make sure there's no more than thirty percent of fine material, so that your granulometry contains less than thirty percent of uh, less than sixty three mic. So there's another uh, question. Can you explain more about the treatment PFAS holding activated carbon? I, that 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 is the water. So how would the water the water would go to carbon? Can you just yeah yeah you know, expand a little in bit a, that. In, a, in a filter filter it to activated carbon and uh, be sure that you have a residence time that is high enough so that uh, so it would be essentially a fixed the kind of a fixed bed fixed bed but la large yeah. large vessel where you dimension it or you design it so that there is enough contact time to yes. get to same way as you do. Uh, Brushing in, uh, mm -hmm. in situ treatment, if you try to do that, or you, you filter water with uh, with the papers, which is very normal. Yeah. But there is there is like would you would you have like a, a, a second? I, I was thinking you would have a first one that treats the the water that is recycled. Yeah. yeah. And then there would be like a second one before it gets up. Yes, yes. like a control one. Yeah, yeah. That would that yeah. have been yeah. the question. Yeah. Then another question for PFAS: Were you using the water for washing the soil with? Oh, sorry, it just jumped on. So for PFAS, were you using the water for washing the soil with any additives like surfactants or other, or only water? Only water. Only water. Okay, pretty clear answer. Um, there is another question. Great presentation. Thank you. Uh, uh, what PFAS were analyzed or taken into account uh, for the mass plants uh, in the process flow diagram when you made those percentage one, percentages, um, especially because it's a high percentage of removal or transfer to the to the, to the ground floor? That I cannot answer at the moment. But I okay, have a change. Okay, so so you would get that. Um, uh, it, and, and, but by and large, let me comment on that because I think it, it, it's reaching a, a very very good point. Um, we are here uh, dealing with PFAS and and coming and bringing up some solutions about PFAS because it's it's indeed uh, a question we get all the time and it's a very hot topic. All of a sudden, it, it became very very important, very urgent to come up with treatment solutions. And the only ones were like, let's send it to the landfill or let's incinerate, which which is which would be I think crazy. Um, that being said, we still do that while. We are we are having discussions and 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 scientific back and forth and not even establishing what the and the uh, analytical would be. So to your question, uh, Vasim, I think it's uh, it's indeed a, a very good point. Uh, what is the standard for analyzing? And and we are unfortunately we are not hundred percent there. But the beauty about the combination is. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter because what we know for sure is that the mobilization will take place at temperature. So that is something that is the beauty about, you know, about I think the thermal part and the separation part as well makes sense that it's highly soluble. So uh, uh, the, the, the quality or the uncertainty about the, the analyticals is not per definition blocking us of treating it uh, already. Um, 
So here, uh, uh, another question about uh, only 3% of PFAS mass retained on the fine sludge is quite low. Is it based on a full-scale application? It's based on a, on a full-scale application, but of course, uh, the analytical side of this is important. It's like to say we have uh, PCBs, we have uh, PHs, we analyze... Uh, yeah, we only analyze a few out few of the 4,000 and a bit. No, no, I see the point. Um, and, 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 and again, when I saw that first, it was it, it struck me to see a low percentage in the sludge because we were, you know, using soil washing. Usually, that's where you you expect the most in the solid absorbed part. Now, on the other hand, there's other literature that shows how soluble they are. But to the point made before, the the the, uh, the analysis is is the key to uh, uh, to understanding that. And for PFAS, it's the it's the worst. But you said PCB PAHs. We analyzed. We analyzed, I think, seven PCBs, uh, 16 PHs. There are hundreds of them, and and but at least those we know for a long time. Uh, dioxins, I was meaning, was the same. We've known for a long time the chemistry is established. I think there is still a lot, a lot to learn uh, uh, about PFAS and, uh, and analysis. But to close to uh, to the, the that last question, and then we'll we'll have to close this webinar. But the the the, the bottom line is. It doesn't matter whether it ends up in the liquids and then absorb on carbon or it ends up in the cake. At the end, it will all be mobilized and will be will be destroyed in the thermal oxidizer. So that's um, I would uh, I think I would I would uh, close it there. I, I um, uh, my my biggest thanks and, and, and it was a great honor and pleasure to be with with you Pierre, today and, and to cover this sub this topic. Uh, I thank you all for participating. Um, don't hesitate if you have other questions to contact us. We are uh, we're still there. I see there's some other questions upcoming. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get back to you and uh, and answer and answer to you immediately in uh, in writing. Don't worry. We unfortunately uh, time is running and and we try to keep the the clock. Uh, I mean, try to, to stick to the standard. Um, so again, thank you to all. I would invite you to our next webinar, which will be very, uh, uh, I'm very excited because we're already preparing it. It will be more focused, of course, on, on thermal, but it will have one main topic, which is energy. And we'll talk about how energy, uh, how to choose energy, how much energy consumption is. And right now in these times of high energy uh, prices or, follow, or, follow, or relatively volatile energy prices, why we believe that it's the time to go to thermal because it's actually a low consumption technology compared to some others. So that would be the topic, just a teaser on the next webinar, which I invite you, of course, to join. And uh, uh, it's time for me to close it down. Thank you again, Per. Thank, thank you to you. the audience. And uh, well, see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you very much. You're welcome.